Welcome to SuperXL Training and Coaching. My name is Steve Huang. In this video, you are going to learn the basic form of XLOOKUP function. This is the first video in the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. In the series, I will walk you through from the basic form of XLOOKUP to the advanced usage of XLOOKUP function. You can download the training Excel files from the link given in the description below. XLOOKUP is a relatively new function. It became available in the Excel 2021 version and in Microsoft 365 version in the year 2020. It can do anything you do with VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. It is actually designed to replace the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP function. It's much more powerful and much less prone to errors. If you are using new version of Excel, then you have no need to use the old VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP anymore. If you find this lesson beneficial, please subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. Now let's look at how the basic form of XLOOKUP function works. If you want to practice along with the downloaded Excel files while watching this video, this file is called SuperXL1 XLOOKUP first to last vertical. Before I show you how the XLOOKUP works, let me first explain the background of this data set so you know when and where to use XLOOKUP. Here I have this table with sales records. We have those cost IDs, the bottom of us on the different dates for those different type of products for so many cases and dollar amount. And we have lots of records all the way down to the row 6570. And given that table, we want to somehow to get the region number of those custom ID and also to get the state name and city name of those custom ID. Those are our customers. Definitely we know which region they belong to and which state city they are located. So I have a table on the left side over here to show for all the custom ID we have in this company, we know which region they belong to, which state and city they are located. So this table will have all those custom ID this company has. That means we are able to find a way to return the region, state, and city of those custom ID. They are available in here. And that could be done by using the XLOOKUP function. So now you understand the background. Let me draw on my screen to show you how this XLOOKUP function look like. Now, let me create a copy of this sheet. And in the copy, I will get rid of this picture and I will make my screen a little bit bigger, make it easier for you to see. So in this cell L11, we need to do an XLOOKUP function. And we can start with equal sign, and the function name is XLOOKUP. And all functions will have the opening and closing bracket. Inside, you will have few arguments. For XLOOKUP, there are six arguments and in between every two arguments you must have a comma to separate different arguments now for this first lesson we are not going to do all six arguments we are going to do just the basic form of the xlookup so the fourth fifth and sixth arguments they're optional you don't have to have that depending on your purpose and your circumstance and for now we are going to omit those three arguments and we're going to have only the first three arguments. Now, the formula over here in the cell L11, we're trying to get the region number of that cost ID 1404 over here. What should be the first argument in the X lookup? The first argument should be what you are looking for. My formula over here, what should we look for? Should we look for that custom ID number, or date, or per family, or cases, or dollar amount? You know, the region is an attribute of the custom ID. If you want to get the region number of the custom ID, you have to look for the custom ID. If you look for the date, or per family, or cases, or dollar amount, those will not tell you which region that custom ID belongs to. So our first argument will be this custom ID number. That's what we're looking for. 
We'll look for this custom ID number from where? The second argument will be the range you are looking within. And we have the customer number in this range over here in column D. Then our second argument will be this range of all those custom ID. Now I'm only drawing this small rectangle, but the actual range should be going down all the way to reach all the 41 custom IDs. So the X lookup function will be looking for that first argument value, which is 104. Within the second argument range, which is range over here, going all the way down, and it's going to find that 144. Here it happened to be in this position. And once you find that match, then in the third argument, you have to decide in which range to return the corresponding value. So the third argument will be the range to return the corresponding value. And we are trying to return the region number of those custom ID. So my third argument should be the region number range in the column A over here. Again, I'm only drawing that small rectangle, but that should be going all the way down to include all those custom ID of this company. Now, once this X lookup find that first argument value within the second argument range, let's say that happened to be over here, and then it's going to return the cell value in the third argument in the same position. So in the same position, that cell value will be returned. Here, 1404 is in this position, then it's going to return the region number in the same position, but in the third argument range. In concept, in theory, this is how the X lookup works. It's going to look for the first argument value within second argument range. Once find the match over there, then it's going to return in the third argument range the cell value in the same position. For this particular one, it looks for this one for the four in the second argument range to find the match over here, then it returns in the third argument range in the same cell position, the value over there, which is region one. Now for the X lookup to work, there is a condition that have to be met. If the range you're looking within is a column, then the number of row in second argument range have to be the same as number of rows in the third argument range. If this range has say 1000 rows, and that range has 1001 rows, then the format cannot work. They both have to have the same number of rows. Since we omitted the fourth, the fifth, sixth arguments, actually XLOOKUP is going to assume certain parameters for you. It's going to assume the lookup order will be from first to last. And in this case, it will be from top to bottom. And it also going to assume the match type will be exactly match, meaning this XLOOKUP will try to find this exact match of that first second value in the second argument range. Now it also assume if that exact match not being found in the second argument range, then the XLOOKUP will give you an A as a result, not available. Now one more thing, when XLOOKUP look for that first argument value within the second argument range. In this case, it's looking in the order from first to last, so from top to bottom. Once it finds the first match, it stops. It does not go any further. If you have this 1404 appear multiple times in that list over here, only the first match will be returned. So that's a behavior for any lookup function. Once it finds the first match, it stops. That's the concept, the structure of this XLOOKUP. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we can do this formula in Excel. Let me go back to the first sheet and let me make the screen a little bit bigger. Let's do this XLOOKUP. So in the cell L11, let's type equal sign because all formula or function start with equal sign. And then we we'll type X. Once you start with X, you can see in this auto complete list over here, we'll have a few functions starting with X to appear in that list. And we don't have to go down to find that X lookup. 
we can just type XL because only XLOOKUP starting with XL. Once you have XLOOKUP appear in this auto complete list over here, you don't have to type the whole thing yourself anymore. You can insert this function from this auto complete list. And you'll insert that not by pressing enter, because enter means you are done with this formula. We're not done yet, we're just starting. To insert that function, you have to press the tab key. So let's press tab. That will insert the function for us. And it also insert that open bracket for us too. Now we'll be working on the first argument. What are we looking for? We're looking for that custom ID here. Then I can use my left arrow key. So left arrow key to go to that cell G11. And that's our first argument. And you know, between any two arguments, you must have a comma. So now in order to finalize the first argument, I'm gonna press a comma. So the first argument is done. Now we'll move on to the second argument. And the second argument is the range you're looking within. We're looking for this custom ID within that range over here. Let's use left arrow key to go to the cell D11. And from here, we want to select all the custom ID going down. The keyboard shortcut for that is hold on control and shift, then press arrow down. So that will select that range and then comma. Now, the third argument will be the range to return the corresponding value. Now, you may not see my formula over here, but you can see that from the formula bar. Now, we're working on the third argument. The third argument is a range to return the corresponding value, which will be the column A over here with all those region number. So now, I need to go further to the left. I'm going to continue with my left arrow key, left arrow key, left arrow key, all the way to A11. Again, I need to select all those region number going down. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift Arrow Down. So that's my third argument, and we're not going to do the fourth, fifth, sixth argument for this lesson. Now I will close the bracket and enter. Now this formula gave me the result, which is region one. If I double click inside, you will see that's what we have down. X lookup looking for that G11 cell in the range from D11 to D51. And once find the match, give us the corresponding cell value in the range from A11 to A51. And enter. So that's a formula. Now, this is the formula for only that first custom ID and only for the region. We need to do similar formula for the other custom ID down below and for the state and CD too. So now we have to think about the reference. I have to assume you already have the knowledge about the relative reference, absolute reference, mixed reference. Now in my training, I spent one hour to teach about reference. So here we're gonna focus on the X lookup. I assume you have understanding of the reference. So I will just explain briefly what kind of reference we're gonna have in order for this one formula work for the other custom ID for all three fields. So when I copy the formula down, I wish this custom ID number, this cell G11, to go down so I want the row to be open. But when I copy across, I still want to look for the custom ID, then I will lock the column. So for the G11, I'm going to press F4 one time, two time, three time. Now I'm locking the G, but 11 is open. Then for the second argument, which is the custom ID range, when copy the formula down, I want them to stay in the same 41 row, don't move to any other row. And also when copy or cross, I wish them to stay in column D2, don't change to another column, so I will lock the column too. So let me take this second argument in my formula, press F4 one time, this will lock them in absolute. Now for my third argument, which is the range of the region, when I copy the formula down, I want them to stay in the same row, don't move to any other row. But when I copy across, I wish the region can change from region to state to city, so I will allow the column to be open. Now let me do F4 one time, two time. Now the row is locked, but the column is open, so that can change from region to state to city. With that reference, I can now press Enter and then copy the formula to all the other row or the other column. 
and I will do so with the keyboard shortcut. So I will copy this cell L11, Control C to copy that. And I will use my left arrow key to go to the column K. From here, I can go down to the bottom by hold on Control, then press arrow down. Now I'm reaching at the bottom of the data set. Then I want to move back to column L with arrow right. Now from the ending cell over here, I want to select all the way up by hold on Control and Shift and arrow up. And then I want including column M and N, I will hold down Shift key, then press arrow right, arrow right. Then I can paste my formula with Control V. So now with that, we got the result for every custom ID, their region, their state, their cities. And my cursor now is at the bottom. If I want to move my cursor to the top, I can hold on Control key, then press arrow up. So now my cursor is back at the top. That's how this XLOOKUP works in the basic form, just having three arguments. But XLOOKUP does not only look vertically in column, it can also look horizontally in a row. In the second video, you are going to learn how to do XLOOKUP by looking horizontally. Okay, I hope you have practiced along while watching this video and mastered the basic form of the XLOOKUP function. If you find this video beneficial, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. If you do have any question regarding this lesson, please write a comment below. I will answer your question. In the second video of this XLOOKUP Inside Out series, you are going to learn how to do XLOOKUP horizontally. So not vertically, but horizontally. I look forward to seeing you in the second lesson. Thank you.